Welcome back to the channel guys. Today we're going to talk about a rig I've been catching a ton of fish on recently. We're going to have a couple videos coming up on the channel with it in the coming weeks. Uh, I have a couple tournaments coming up and then we'll get back up to where I've been catching these fish on this. And for today's video, we're just going to talk about how to rig this thing up. There's some little things that I've learned when fishing this bait, how to catch more fish, how to keep from breaking off as much, and hopefully land you more bass at the end of the day. We're going to be talking about the Carolina rig. So today's video is kind of going to be a prequel to what's coming up. We're going to talk about some tricks on how to fish this thing, how to catch more fish with it, all that kind of stuff. But you got to know how to rig this thing up. Sometimes it seems a little bit complicated, but we'll put it together in a fairly simple way to have you catching more fish in no time. So let's stay tuned and let's get right into it. So the Carolina rig is an amazing summertime bass fishing bait. It works in the spring as well and even in the fall. But for summer, for some reason, those fish absolutely love a Carolina rig, especially when they've been pestered with a crankbait over and over again on these offshore places. Another thing is if you're just learning to offshore fish for the first time and you want to learn how to catch those fish out deep and do all that kind of stuff, the Carolina rig is where I started and it's probably one of the best ways to start doing it for one reason. You have a very heavy weight here and it gets it down to the bottom and you can tell exactly what that bottom is by dragging this bait. So you'll learn what stumps feel like, you'll learn what rocks feel like, you'll learn if you're stuck in the grass, you'll learn if you're fishing on soft bottom. It'll teach you everything you need to know on that bottom, especially if you don't have good fish finders or fish finders at all, where you might not be able to look at it and say, okay, that's hard bottom just by looking at your fish finder. So the first thing we're gonna start with is our rod and reel setup. Um, I do not have a true Carolina rig rod. Uh, this is actually a kind of a flipping rod. Um, I would like to have a seven foot six medium heavy with a fast action. That would be the ideal Carolina rig rod. I do not own one. So I've just been using a seven foot three medium heavy to a heavy action rod. So somewhere in that range is what I've been using. The extra three inches helps a little bit when throwing this bait. I've just been trying to throw like a little bit shorter leader, but I do notice that a seven foot six would probably be the ideal setup for this. When it comes to your reel, this is a little bit more important. You're gonna want a seven one to one gear ratio. You're dragging this bait on the bottom. You're gonna have a ton of line out there. So you might have a bite on a very end of a long cast. You're gonna have to wind these fish in fast or they'll start swimming away and towards you doing all kinds of crazy stuff. They can throw this hook. There's a lot of leverage for them to throw this hook because they have a weight three foot above their face so they can swing that all over the place. Usually when you set the hook on these fish, they don't come off, uh, but just to have an, a little bit extra assurance, I like the higher gear ratio, especially to pick up slack on those long casts, or if you get a bite way out there, you can really wind up on these fish and lay back into them and get a good hook set. Um, so that's what I'm gonna go with there. And then for my line, I'm gonna use two different types of line on my Carolina rig. My main line is going to be fluorocarbon 100% of the time. Um, you can use braid if you wanted to, but when it comes to bottom bouncing baits, I don't like braid because you'll get an arc going down to the bait because braid floats. So if you have fluorocarbon, it's gonna sink and go straight to that weight. The other thing is your line size. So the bigger the line size you have, the thicker the diameter, which means you're going to have more bow in your line and it's not going to get a direct connection. If you true, like if you put eight pound test on here and threw a Carolina rig out there, it would get con connected directly to it. It would sink properly. You'd feel it, everything down there. You'd get so much better feel. The problem is you'd break off all the time because you'd have so light line. So you have to play a fine line in the middle depending on how big your fish are, what type of cover you're fishing. My go-to is 15 to 17 pound test. That's where I'm gonna live most of the time. If I'm fishing against some really big fish or some heavy cover down there, stumps, stuff like that, I will go up to 20 pound test. That is as heavy as I'll ever go. Most of the times I'm gonna try 15 if I can, 17 will be usually my go-to. Now let's come down here and talk about the end of the rig, which is what really matters. This is gonna be your second type of line and I'm gonna throw monofilament for my leader here. And the reason being, everyone says it floats. Um, it's true, monofilament does float but it's not going to float in the instance of your baits, your weights laying on the bottom here and your bait's gonna float straight up like this. It's not a bobber. It's 
just gonna float better than fluorocarbon will because fluorocarbon does sink quickly in the water. So if you throw monofilament and you have a weightless bait back here, even though this weight, this bait has salt in it, the hook has weight to it. When you're dragging this, if you have a really long leader, this bait will be on the, or the weight will be on the bottom and the bait will hover off the bottom six, 10 inches. As you pull it, it might float back up a little bit and kind of spiral back down. It could do all kinds of different stuff and it makes it look much more natural and free flowing and weightless down there no matter how deep you're putting this bait. I will always go one line size lighter than my main line on my rod. So typically I go 17 pound test for my main line and I'll put 14 pound test on my Carolina rig leader. The reason for that is if I hook this hook in a stump, when I snap this off, it's gonna break at this knot right here or this knot on my swivel right here. Either way, you're just tying on another hook. You're not gonna lose your entire setup up here. This is all still good to go. You just tie on a new leader and a hook and you're back to fishing. Now, when it comes to the rest of your setup here, I will always have a barrel swivel right here. That's gonna connect my two lines. So I will start by sliding up my sinker on my line. So depending on what kind of um, sinkers you wanna buy, if you can buy tungsten, definitely use tungsten, you'll feel more. This is a half ounce tungsten that I have right here, just slid up my line. But I used to use and still do, depending on how snaggy the bottom is. If you're gonna lose a lot of weights, I won't go with tungsten. I'll actually go with a lead egg weight and it's because it has a little bit more surface area. Not only will you get less snags because that weight's bigger, but because of that surface area, it'll allow you to feel what's on the bottom better, even if it's not tungsten, than a, like a cylinder weight or something like that where it's very skinny and it doesn't make enough contact with the bottom. So either go with a lead egg weight or a tungsten sinker. Those are my two go-to ones. And then below that, I will put a glass bead. This is typically controversial. Some people don't like glass. Um, I'll show you a little trick to keep what it happens with glass from happening here in just a second but glass is known to chip and it's known to break. So a lot of times when you set the hook, if this weight slams down into your swivel and sandwiches the bead in between, it could either chip out some of the bead. So when you set the hook the next time, that glass is very sharp, it'll cut your line and you'll lose everything here and you'll break off on a fish or the bead will explode entirely and could nick your line for a future hook set and you'll set the hook and break a fish off that way. I lost many a fish using glass beads and I learned a little trick to keep that from happening. Now, you don't have to use a glass bead, you can use plastic, but you will not get the sound that a glass bead makes if you go to plastic. They do make a different sound and glass sounds much better, especially against a tungsten weight. A glass tungsten combo is awesome, but they will explode all the time with that combo. So what I do here is I take a bobber stop and I put it on after I put my bead and my weight on right before I tie my swivel on. When that bead comes down, it's hitting a rubber bobber stop and it has a cushion, not only against the knot, so it doesn't break the knot, but the bead itself has a cushion that it hits against, so you're not breaking these beads off constantly or chipping them. You're gonna land more fish with that one trick alone. Now lastly, when it comes to a Carolina rig, you have to pick your bait selection. So I typically go with a five aught extra wide gap hook here. This is actually the six cents uh, stout extra wide gap hooks, they're awesome. Uh, you could go with a three aught to a five aught, depends on what you're fishing. So I have a zoom old monster on here. I'm gonna go with a five aught hook. Most baits I'm gonna fish on the Carolina rig will fit on a five aught hook. So I'll put that one on there first. Um, there's a couple that I'll throw that are better with a three aught. Basically, you could throw anything you want on a Carolina rig here. So like I said, I got a zoom old monster. If I'm looking for a big bite, this is a great way to do it. This gives it a bunch of action, a uh, big profile, and you can catch a bunch of fish throwing that on your Carolina rig there. Another excellent one is the Zoom Lizard. That one's been around forever. Those are like the two most common baits that typically get thrown on a Carolina rig, either a big curly tail worm or a Zoom Lizard. Um, one I've started throwing that's similar to the Zoom Lizard is the Sixth Sense Hogwalla. It is like a double tail lizard and the arms are curly tails as well produces a bunch of action in the water, 
curly tails everywhere, could look like a big bluegill or pretty much anything down there, um, crawfish, whatever. I mean, half the stuff doesn't imitate anything on the bottom anyway. No fish is eating 10 inch worms down there. It just looks like something that they wanna eat and it's a big meal and they're gonna get it, especially when there's competition down there on these spots. Couple other options that are really good are your typical craw baits. They look like bluegills or crawfish as well. So that's when I'd go to a three-aught hook. I'd use something like a six cents prawn or a six cents stroker craw. Those are excellent choices. That's when I'd use that three-aught hook. If you're really mimicking bluegill, you know those fish are eating bluegills. Those would be two that I would really like to throw. Um, and then if you know fish are feeding on other types of bait fish, an excellent one is the six cents flush. Um, you can actually Carolina rig flukes. They'll eat them just fine. A lot of times if you twitch your rod a little bit as you're dragging it on the bottom, that bait will actually dart a little bit on that mono, come up off the bottom, and it'll kind of flutter back down on that monofilament line because it doesn't sink like fluorocarbon. Uh, and then my favorite one of all time, must have, must throw, on a Carolina rig is going to be the six cents clout worm. Any type of straight tail worm, I've even used the divine shaky worms before. Those are excellent on a Carolina rig. Nobody throws them. Everyone always wants to throw, like I said, lizards, 10 inch worms, creature baits, these bigger profile baits. If you throw one of those stick worms down there and drag it on those same places, you will be amazed at how many bites you get. Oftentimes what I'll do is I'll put this five aught hook on here I'll throw this old monster and try and get a big bite out of the school first. Once they're done biting this, I'll take this off and I'll put a clout on there and I'll start catching more fish because it's a different profile, different presentation, a little bit more finesse, and it'll allow me to catch some fish on the Carolina rig still out there on those spots. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and if you're interested in checking any of those Sixth Sense products out, if you use my code Quince on the website, you'll save 10% on your entire order and you'll be helping out the channel a ton. If you wanna see some other summertime baits that you need to be throwing in addition to the Carolina rig, check this video out right here. I'll have you catching more fish all summer long and thanks for watching.